everybody, and welcome back to Reaper Pro Tips with me, your host and disembodied hands, Quindy, disembodied beard, John. We need a picture of that. We need a little emoji, which is just a beard <laughs> with John's face erased from it. Maybe two, two googly eyes in the middle. <laughs> and and um, Queen Kiki is in the other room um, sulking because it's it's going to be cleaning uh, cleaning person day. So she has to get uh, stuffed into my uh, my office with me uh, shortly. I told I said that there were maids coming, and she gave me that look. I think she knows what that means now. Anyway, maybe she'll make an uh, make an appearance later on. Hello, everybody. It is a Monday kind of Monday. It is. It is. I was just writing my my author newsletter this morning, uh, earlier on, and uh, it's it's all about oof. <laughs> it's all about this month being full of oof. <laughs> The missing body beard emoji. We need to get trash right on that, right? <laughs> or anybody else with any any artistic talent, right? Speaking of Trashorama, um, since he is the the wonderful person uh, who created a a uh, full scale blorf um, icon for me graphic, uh, I did create a Zazzle store yesterday or the, the the day before. I created a Zazzle store this weekend. Um, I have not put products in it yet because that's a whole rigmarole of its own that I haven't, like, I need to create graphics. So, uh, but yes, because Trash put that effort in, I'm going to put the effort in and, uh, create a painting big store. So today, today is when I whip out a sticky note and y'all tell me what you would like to see in that store. Since you are the main impetus for, uh, for me doing it at all. And, and, uh. I ran this by David last night because I was I was curious as to whether I should just put Blorf on the mug, just the graphic with the paint splatters, or if it should be to Blorf is human, to paint minis is divine. What do you think? What do you think? I, definitely the bigger slogan, I think, on the t-shirt, right? With the Blorf in the middle, and then it's to Blorf is human, and then to paint minis is divine underneath. So, but then, I, you know, I'm up open. I want to do some painting big t-shirts with the dragon logo because I like my dragon logo a lot. I think it's cool. Um, so it'd be nice for me to actually have like a, couple, uh, a long sleeve tee and a regular tee. So, but if you guys have any ideas, Sazzle does a lot of stuff. Um, and maybe I'll just do a blorf too. <laughs> maybe I'll just do one with the blorf jack. We'll do an A-B testing. We'll create a t-shirt with just the blorf. And then we'll create a t-shirt with the saying, and we'll see which one goes better, right? Which one has, sells more copies. We'll, we'll do an extended A-B test. Those things that I never do because I'm impatient and just want to get to it. <laughs> the idea of both, okay. And of course, we're going to have a Blorf mug. And I'll we'll probably do that the same way. We'll have just one with the Blorf and then one with the saying. Um, and I would like to do some other mini painter related merch, like just with, with stuff that we have and do. Um, paint it purple and call it done is uh, of course something that, that might need to be done. There is not enough merch for us with all of our sayings, guys. Like cult of purple and teal, you know? Like maybe somebody else does do these things. Does anybody know if somebody has a merch store that like use it, like gives us like things to wear that embody those memes of our hobby? Like if, if anybody knows, you guys would know. Pokey tool. Well, but I can't do that, Crows. Um, no, Zazzle is, Zazzle is not like that. Zazzle is like, it has this these products and you can put your thing on it. Um, but the Pokey Tool uh, is not... Weirdly, the Pokey Tool is, is more effort than Zazzle. <laughs> Higher highlights, darker shadows. World's most average mini painter. Yes, yes. That's a good one. That's a good one. I have the higher highlights, darker shadows. But does anybody do that? Like, I don't think I've ever seen merch that's really, like, done by someone in our community. Like, we all know these memes. The painted purple, call it done. Yeah. Yeah, salmon is tasty. Yeah. Cult of Purple and Teal.
Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I would do mugs and, and then you guys could get some for paint water or for brush holding. Because if you leave the brushes pointing up, it's actually... I mean, there's a reason that, that every like 2D artist you see like has a, just a normal glass or cup for their, for their brush holding. Uh, it's not a travel case, but it totally keeps them safe and keeps their points going up. You know, Unless they have cats, then they can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't have a good one for brush licking, but... And of course, all of this is going to take a while because I need to actually create graphics, right? Brush, li brush Lickers Anonymous. <laughs> I'll just put a question mark there. Okay, so let's get Melanaire's stuff figured out here. Your mug of well-chewed brushes. All right, well, maybe you need another mug then. Anyway, I'm working on it. My point was in bringing this up was just to say, hey, guys, I'm working on it. Um, all right, so we're looking at all this. Okay, I used blue liner for that. We still need to do the boots. Um, yeah. Haven't really done that. Haven't done the back of the cape at all, which was our, um, our jungle moss, actually. Yeah, let's do cape today. Let's do cape. I feel capey. Oh, so capey. Where is my jungle moss? That's ancient oak. That's not jungle moss. I'm grabbing every color except the color I actually need. You know how that happens? You know? Yeah, there we go. Jungle moss. And we use leaf bud to highlight it. But yeah, so we'll make some mini painting merch. And it'll be the painting big store merch for mini painters. Um, we'll just, uh, yeah, we'll just do that. But I'll have to figure out some, some, uh, figure out some cool stuff and make some cool graphics, which I can do. I am capable of it. It just takes time, right? The Blorf one's easy because Trash did the, uh, the, uh, thing for me and the painting big dragon those will be up fast um but the others uh will take a little bit because of course i have to take time away from all the other stuff that i've loaded onto my docket like the mini painting book and extra videos for the youtube and doing my amazon ads and you know all that crap yeah the purple shading is really nice it's just it's really nice and and the purple, I find the purple is actually a better shader uh, for muted purples. Like, I really like purple shading on olives or muted, or sorry, muted greens. Muted greens like this jungle moss. Like, I really like it. Um, all right, so we'll do some of that, and then we're going to do, so we'll keep our base color around, and then we're going to do a highlight. And since the jungle moss is so much stronger than the leaf bud green, I'm going to do like four buds, four drops of leaf bud to one drop of jungle moss. Kiki woke me up this morning at 6 a.m. because the floor was warm <laughs> because she doesn't like being warm and our floor is is uh is uh, is under floor heating right is it's uh radiant heat so sadly because it got cold in the house um it got warm really warm in our room which made a very fu for a very fussy kiki at 6 a.m. so i asked david to adjust the temperature so that the thermostat wouldn't go on quite so early yeah, which is pretty common. Actually, it's like the way these houses were built. We're in an Eichler, Zachariah, which is, um, uh, there was an architect out here in the Bay Area and California in general doing this style of home, which was designed for like new families. Um, and uh, there were just, there were just very specifics of certain, certain elements of the design and radiant heating was one of them. So yeah, this is the first time I've actually had a house with uh like the floor gets warm <laughs> instead of the, the downside is there is no venting. There's no duct system. So if you want to put in AC, you have to put essentially run ducts all over the, the roof, which is flat because it's a mid century modern house. Um, so yeah, it's an, it's an interesting, it's definitely, definitely this climate. Like it's definitely this climate thing. All right. So we're just making some nice, Colors. There. There we go. So that's the leaf bud, that's the, uh, the uh, moss, and then we've got that in between, which is almost uh, similar to a meadow green.
My, my other members of my family hated seafood when I was growing up, so I never got to have it. The only time I got to have it is when we went to a Chinese restaurant when I would promptly order sweet and sour shrimp every time. But yes, my, uh, I was, I was raised, I, I have come to realize in the later stages of my life that I was raised oh so Midwestern and it's an amazing thing that, that I've gotten as, as food adventurous as I have. <laughs> I definitely was, uh, was, was fighting against my upbringing. All right. And we were using, um. Osirian sand to bring up that leaf, leafy green, leaf bud green. So, but we'll we'll just work on the cape. We'll do a little bit of texture. Um, yeah, what kind of texture do I want to do? Normally, I do a woven texture on these. Um, we might start with um, a broad stroke, but maybe we'll do some um, some uh, stippling as well to kind of make it look rougher. Too tired. Yep. Yeah, I get it. Like I said, the Keekster, uh, the Keekster disrupted my sleep this morning, which always is frustrating to me because I rely so much on getting good sleep. I think this is not going to be transparent enough. Well, maybe it's not too bad, actually. Yeah. All right. Maybe it'll work. I'm going to put just a tiny bit. My gut says it needs just a tiny bit more water, though. Um. But yeah, it's also frustrating to me because in order to like like live my best life for the day, I desperately need good sleep. Right, we just don't. We decided not to do the heat pump, uh, Pendrick, because we this house is it's not necessarily historic, but it kind of is. Eichlers are kind of their own thing, and they're part of the value of the house is is like what it is, um, and so we don't want to punch holes in the wall if we can avoid it. Uh, We'll see if, if we continue to get like record hot summers, then maybe, but we have, um, we have a foam insulation on the roof and that means that the house really doesn't get over 80, even on days when it's close to hundred degrees. So usually it's more like 78, 79 at its top end and we have plenty of fans. Um, it's Kiki I worry about more than me. I have a heat tolerance. Um, we have, I have a cooling mat for her, but she is just not old enough to deal with it yet. I, I fear that she would promptly attempt to grab the end in her teeth and, uh, because that's what she does with beds and mats. And then she would puncture the gel and then it would be ruined. So essentially she can't have it yet. So I pretty much give her a fan. Um, and usually I open the door to the garage, which has a cement floor, which is much cooler than our wood floors. She likes to lie on the cement floor in the summers. But I mean, it's not like, you know, 78 is, is intolerable dog weather. If our house got up to like 85 or 90, then I'd be worried, but, um, it's really not too bad. It's just that our, we have a Shiloh and Shilohs prefer it to be glacial. They're usually AC seeking missiles when it comes to hot. Hey, Slayer. I was just looking up advice on the web the other day, and this old house was who gave it to me, their online site. I used to watch it a lot when I was a kid. My parents had it on. So we're going to go and uh, and go a little bit strong with the highlight here, but we remember we can always come back from the other direction and... Uh, brush our jungle moss over the top. They don't really make air gap. Like, I mean, sure you could get your dog an elevated bed, but the cooling gel seemed like it was capable of being a little cooler than that. And she doesn't really like elevated beds. We had one for her and she just was not a fan. So yeah, the cement is the best option, I think. It's gonna stay cooler. So 
So we're going to get this, get these highlights up here. Oh, she would, uh, ice is her, ice, she loves ice. She, she's, she's been chasing ice cubes since she was a baby. No, I think, I think the, the garage cement is, is a good enough, uh, I mean, we give her, we give her fans and we give her garage cement. She has plenty of water. And like I said, it's not really that hot. It's just hot for a keeker because she, Shiloh's really do prefer, like, one of Kiri's sons used to, they called him, they, his name was, it was Ajax, but his, uh, his owners called him Yeti because he would, the minute it snowed and got below, got to, you know, below freezing, he would like go out into the yard and just lie in it and like not come in, not want to come in at night. <laughs> he had a really, he had Leo's coat, so he had a really thick coat. He was a funny boy. He was a lot like his daddy. But yeah, the nice thing about the cooling gel is that as long as, um, like, if she doesn't lie on part of it, then it'll actually kind of recharge and, and cool down, become more effective. Um, so it's it's best used in, in like, breaks, with breaks, right? Or or moving from one area of it to another. It's just like, like I said, she's still such a puppy. She needs to be able to handle a bed without trying to play with it and pull it around and, and do bad things to it, like... And if she can do that, then I'll try the cooling pad for her. But we also have tile, um, which is in front of our fireplace that we never use. And she loves the tile on the hot days. That's where she, I usually put her fan like facing right onto the tile. So we're leaving a lot of texture here. But we can take that down pretty easily if we want to. It does, uh, leaving the texture does allow you to highlight faster. And it is easier, right? You're not trying to get smooth. But yeah, one day Kiko will get there. One day. I had a picture of her brother, Percy who is actually Lance, or no, Bucky now, Bridget sent to me yesterday. Apparently he is a monstrous dog. He is a giant, giant black dog. All of these, uh, the solid black pups are actually interesting in that they have some silver. Um, he's got silver back here and a little bit of silver in his mane. So they're really pretty. Um, he is apparently a monster dog, like over 30 inches at the shoulder. Crazy, crazy big from that litter. So that's Kiki's bro, other bro, one of her other bros. And I haven't had a picture of um, Burke, who is the, he was the dual boy who was kind of the pick of the litter confirmationally. But he lives by Shaney, Banyan's mom in Florida. And, uh, but apparently his owners weren't really good about setting boundaries, so she hasn't brought him to any shows. Like, when he's at her house, he apparently minds really well, but <laughs> otherwise his behavioral his behavior is not ideal. Which is a shame because he's a beautiful dog. He had he had one ear up. So Kiki had both. He had one. Everybody else had, had ears up at some point during their uh, puppyhood, but all of them went down again. So the genes are there, and with another generation, we could probably get them to go up. But yeah, I like this. Uh, I like this Wetterhound match that we got. I like the. I like all these dogs. They're good. All right, so we're highlighting up there. Uh, yeah, little little black, really curly pup. The one that was really poofy. She would try to eat that pen rig. Plastic, plastic bo water bottles. I, you can usually give a puppy a plastic water bottle to play with. No, Kiki was the destroyer. Um, so I couldn't do that. Now, one thing we got to remember is we don't want to necessarily bring up um, all of the highlights on this cape because they're going to, this is the color, right? The, the shadow color of our green here, our light green is going to be the highlight color on this cape. So we need to, 
if we're going to bring it up to that level, we need to keep those highlights very small so that uh, we still can see that these are different. And they should be. She would probably shred the, shred the handle first. It just wouldn't be good, trust me. She gets plenty of ice cubes when, uh, when it's hot, and she has. We've got our ways of dealing with it. She just wishes we lived in, you know, a really cold place. So that's looking okay. So yeah, because we started very dark with this, though, um, chances are we don't have to worry too much. We just don't want to overdo it on our highlights. So as I bring this up, I'm going to start, I think I'm going to start uh, bringing in, I'm going to keep this shadow here because it definitely curves. You can see how this curves inward. So you know you would keep a shadow here. Kiki's pretty destructive. Like, she's she's been... She's very good about only playing with her toys. But if I give her something like that, that means it is a her toy and she will destroy it. Um, probably as she gets older, this will be less of a thing. All right, so if I want to take this texture down, I'll do a glaze with my uh, dark green, with my jungle moss. Morning, Daffodil. Now, I don't want to glaze necessarily over the purple parts because uh, it will mean they will be less purple, right? So if I'm going to do this glaze, I'm going to try to kind of preserve my purple and concentrate the glaze on the green. And since I've thinned it, you need to make sure that it's really thinned down to colored water state so that you don't get marks, really. You can also do a feathering stroke at the edge of the glaze to kind of blend it into the purple if we do see that we're getting some differentiation. But ideally, this glazes down our green, makes our texture more integrated. It also makes the color richer. You see what it's doing? It's because the, um, the jungle moss is more saturated than that mixture that we created. So now we've brought back more of an intense green compared to this little kind of, you see how it's grayed out, out here, up here? And we've totally lost that down here with our glaze. So this is one of the things that glazing is really good for. It's really good for re restoring intensity because when you mix highlights, often you're gonna get a grayed out color or kind of a, a mild color and, and you're gonna lose that saturation. Um, so when you glaze, you bring that right back in at least to some extent. You can keep that nice rich green and still have highlights. Um, I'm going to go and highlight the, this on the front and these guys down here. Hmm, it's not showing on my end. So it's not internet. Or I don't think it's internet because it's not showing, not showing for me. Damn you, Twitch. Let me see. No, I'm not getting any problems whatsoever on my dashboard. Nothing. This is definitely Twitch. Frames, Pendrake, frames. Let me do a double check. No, stream quality is good. It's frames per second. We know. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it didn't give me any performance uh, notifications on my end at all. So it wasn't my internet. Yeah, it's frames per second, Pendrake. We know. Quindy and I know what it is. We know what FPS means. Normally the stream runs about 48, 48 frames per second. So three is not good. That's an understatement. So I'm just going to hit these little areas here. Now these folds are really narrow. 
And uh, take your allergy pill, Quindy. I'm all stuffy today. But because these folds are really narrow, we really can't go across them. We've we've just we're stuck doing the li the linear highlight until we get to a broader place where we can do that sideways brush stroke. And everything up here on the top of the shoulder should be lighter. Remember, because the light is going to hit it. You had a very congested weekend without me, huh? <laughs> we worked on Crystal Dragon on my stream. You missed it. I decided I was feeling draconic this weekend. Oh, nice. That's great. It was your uncle, right, that you went to visit? And he's doing okay? Oh, flag spikes. Right. But with video, probably it's also just in general video and streaming as frames per. Although nowadays, not so much since you don't have frames like a film, old-fashioned film. Yes, technology has its own lingo, though. You know that, Pendrake. There we go. So we got the shoulder up there. Oh, nice. If he has a good attitude, he's, uh, he's already there. Like, that's such the win. Like... Having gone through it, I did and talked to my healthcare professionals. I always came in smiling and I always was making jokes to the nurses. Like, they're like, you're going to be fine. Because if you have a positive attitude and you really acquit yourself on the on the therapy side, like, that's 80% of the battle. Like, and physical therapists love people who, who like, actually acquit themselves and actually, like, like, try hard and have a great attitude. Like, that's... That's awesome. I'm really happy to hear that, Quindy. Whereas if you don't, if you don't, that's the bad. So try, everybody, everybody, as you hit health issues in your life, try to keep positive. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. No, I think it's Twitch, Thormel. We're getting some posit some frame problems, frame rate problems. Awesome, Quindy. Yeah. Woohoo! That's a great attitude. Well, then you can think of feet per second and just stay confused, Pendrake. <laughs> but when Quindy's throwing those numbers out, she's usually let me know. So you can just also just ignore it and say, oh, Quindy's talking to Anne and giving her tech info. So Anne knows what's going on. So I can just ignore this. Bwee! Just think, bwee! <laughs> That's what I do sometimes. <laughs> There's technical talk. Oh, your entire internet. I'm sorry, Thormel. I is sorry. Yeah, why? Geez, Twitch, why so twitchy today? Why so twitchy? I'm gonna get this little bit down here on the bottom. I'm gonna get that highlighted. Just a little bit sticking out. And then we do do a little bit of highlighting back here, a little bit of highlighting back here. Just to bring those little bits out because you can see that they're pr pronounced, so we probably get a little bit of highlighting. You just want to make them visible. Essentially, this is just another part of, of making the details on the model visible, right? You could leave those dark, but if you look, light is actually falling down there. So it makes sense to pick out just the edges of those little little bits right there. Um, and then then the, the eye will see them, and it's a nice detail, and it uh, implies... Almost that this is a split cloak, which it's not, but it's kind of cool looking anyway. Whee! 
Yes, yes, exactly, Carrie Michael. That's exactly. Whee! Yes. Yes, Pathfinder rules. <laughs> you just say Pathfinder rules to me, my whole brain goes dark. It's just like, la 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 la, la pardon me while I sneak out in the confusion. <laughs> oh dear. Hey, I've got one for you. Um, and I, I was talking about Kiri Michael. I don't know if you were in here, but I actually did set up the Zazzle store so that I could uh, make Blorf mugs and uh, painting big t-shirts. And we were talking about uh, stuff that we'd like to see on a t-shirt and whether anybody else out there currently does like our, our community memes on, on like gear. And so I was just thinking um, um, there's nothing wrong with sparkly miniatures would be a good one. I, I thought you would endorse that on a t-shirt. <laughs> Grappling is what is what the the uh uh that that sore sorry sad hand to hand artist tries to do in D D and D and like it never works well. <laughs> but yeah, I think there's nothing wrong with sparkly miniatures. Like for Kuriniko and Carrie Michael. No, you don't need to learn any new rules. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I'm there. It, I'm at the point in my life where I'm, I'm just like, I'm going to run the games I already know how to run. <laughs> Although D&D &D is usually, the different editions of D&D &D are usually close enough that I can, I can get there. As long as I don't have a, too big of a rules lawyer in my group. All right, so just bringing up the edges here of the dark green, we still have a nice dark green. I really like the color scheme on this guy. When I first started him, guys, I wasn't sold, but I'm really liking the color scheme on him. Yeah, that's kind of it, Zachary. I know I know the framework well enough to make judgment calls, and when you're the DM, you can you can default to an old rule if you want. You're you're the DM, so um, it's it's not official yet, Vigilari. I have to. I created it, but I haven't put any gear in there because it's a lot. It's going to take up a lot of time, and I'm I'm of course a very busy human. But since I promised, since Trash put the Trashrama took the time to make the Blorf graphic, I'm at least going to get the Blorf graphic up. And uh, let's see. I'm going to just make a note here, but, um, so it'll be painting big, but, uh, it's not, it doesn't have anything in it yet. I have to, I have to do the branding now. Now this is always work. It's not just like I can throw up a Zazzle store. It's going to take like an entire day of work to get like the store branded and then get this, the items made. Um, and that's after I create all these graphics. So yeah, so it's, this is going to be a, uh, yeah. Yeah, just keep your keep your uh, brain here every once in a while, and once it's up and has stuff in it, um, I'll be sure to mention it. But I wanted to let people know that I have not forgotten and that I indeed did make a Sazzle store this weekend. So now I just need to create more graphics. Unfortunately, I also need to write a lot of words this month. So, and that uh, doing almost two thousand words a day like takes a lot of time, and I haven't even been able to meet my goals for the last week, so I'm behind. November is not the best time for me to have chosen to start all this. It really isn't. Yeah, but I need to hire artists to produce any graphic like that, Zechariah. So then I need to go to Fiverr. And, uh, and pay for a graphic. Because I certainly don't have the time or the um, ability to do cartoon graphics, that kind of thing. So, so that's an, then that's added cost and that's added time and added added time working with said artist, um, having done this before. So yeah, it's not a problem. It just means it's going to cost money, right? 
And investment is fine, except that this Zazzle store is really like just something you guys asked for for the Blorf and stuff. So I don't want it to, I don't want the Zazzle store to like suddenly become this big thing that I have to put a lot of time into yet. Like I'd like to slowly grow it, kind of like slowly growing my YouTube. Where I just put stuff up for you guys that you guys would like. And in that way, we just slowly get more items that are our community. Uh, kind of our little memes and our little cool things. Yeah, because it totally could. Like, I could spend weeks on it. Like, if I really, really wanted to, like, dive in, I could, you know, blow a bunch of money on Fiverr, work with a bunch of people, get a bunch of awesome graphics, spend the time getting all that stuff made, and put online. But I would I would lose <laughs> I would lose lots of words in NaNoWriMo. Um, and I would also get behind on my Patreon and the YouTube. So that's the thing, right? When you, It's the opportunity cost. When you choose to do one thing, you are choosing not to do another thing. So you have to be good at prioritizing when you're me. Just do a little bit of extra highlighting just to bring those back up. And this time I'm focusing just on the centers so that we get more of a there. And we've kept our purple shadows. Our highlights have gotten more narrow. And that, that can be a problem um, because when you do that, the message, remember that highlights are sending a message to the eye of the viewer about what kind of surface this is. So sparkle art. I just think of Kroniko and her sparkly turnids. I want, I want her to, yes. I just, I just think there's nothing wrong with sparkly miniatures could be really good. Path, oh, Pathfinder Society, Society killed your desire to DM. Eight hours, but need to fit a four hour time frame. With annoying gamer boys, yes. Fun story, ain't got no time for grapple rules, yep. Yeah, right? Because it's true. They give you, like, a scenario that you could run really well with a whole day and say you have to run it in half the time. And it's like, well, where's... Ugh. Ugh. No. The only time that was ever fun is when... And I don't know if they still do this, but they used to do a thing at Gen Con a long, 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 long time ago called the D&D &D Open. Anybody know they still do it? Um, it's competitive D&D. &D. You throw all the story to the side... And the point is to see if you can complete the module, short module, in the fastest time. And honestly, I did it one year with my group of friends who uh, were going to Parkside, UW Parkside, and it was so fun. It was so fun because you just didn't have to worry about it. Like the only, the only story element you had to worry about was the story element that was going to tell you where to go next to, to be most efficient in finishing the story. I actually really enjoyed it. Hi, vibe bleach. <laughs> yeah, the new nids are pricey. pricey. It's true. Yeah, I think there's nothing wrong with sparkly miniatures. Has to be a t-shirt. And I'll think of Kuro every time I see it. All right, so essentially if I keep these narrow highlights, it's going to imply that this cloak is shiny. Um, maybe even a little, maybe a little sheer, right? And if that's okay with us, then we're good. Now he is, uh, he is a fancy pants elf, so, you know, he could be shiny. But if we want this cloak to look more softer, billowy, more like a wool or a, a dull fabric that's trying to blend in, then we'd want to make these highlights broader, essentially. We wouldn't want to, we would not want to, uh, just go in a narrow band up the center because that definitely uh, sends the the signal that it's more shiny. Oh, a glitter tattoo of Mushu from Milan. Wow. Yeah. 
That's funny. Alrighty, so if we don't bring our highlights up anymore, we can avoid that shiny fate. Or if we broaden our highlights, we can avoid the shiny fate. Um, I am going to bring in my leaf bud green just for the bottoms, and I think I'm actually going to uh, go in a different direction just to try that out. So, well, I doubt I, I probably it's going to be mica based if it's sparkly because it's non-toxic, but you're still putting tiny flakes of rock under your skin. I don't know if I'd go for that. Have to follow the rules as written. Yeah. It's supposed to have a similar experience. Yep, yep. Right, exactly. Exactly, Carrie Medical. Yep, yep. Home game's where it's at, for sure. I can see if you've got a really good brain for the rules, um, how society play might be might just be fun and challenging for you, but for me, yeah, it doesn't sound like it's my, up my alley. I never really did it. Any of the pre-org stuff. Non-glitter glitter artistry. Oh, okay, so they make it look shiny? They do. They do NMM. They do uh, non-crystal crystal. They just do it with art. That's cool. So I'm going to do um, from a bottom up, or from, from yeah, from bottom up kind of highlight here to broaden out. You can see the vertical lines. And that's going to create a weave pattern. I do need to thin it just a little bit more. Leaf bud green and other, uh, other light colors that have yellow in them can be very sneaky because they look very transparent until you try to layer with them and suddenly you can see your brush marks far more than you think you can. So you do have to keep that in mind. I missed my calling. I needed to be like doing NMM tattoos with glitter. NGG, non-glitter glitter. So yeah, anyway, as we do slowly develop the Zazzle store, I'll ask you guys if there's any design you would particularly like to see. And um, if it involves a, a, some going, going to fiber, then it involves going to fiber, and that's fine. I've used fiber before with good results. We can make it our little, our little Zazzle playground for mini painting merch. Oh, uh, yeah, I have to wonder how this age, right? Although, you know what? I, I respect old people with tattoos. It's okay. I I personally chose never to get one because I, I had, like, even at, at my younger, very unwise age, I had the uh, instinctive knowledge that my personality and goals and, like, interests would change enough as I got older that it was very unlikely that any tattoo I got would be like still something I wanted on me in 20 years. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I just never went for that. <laughs> Sparkly glitter dragon tattoo sleeves. That's what we need, That's that's what you need. Nico. and then start working out you know so that you get like some good biceps going on and you can rock those intimidate people with the power and um, potency of your glitter arms I ate two pieces of carrot cake yesterday and still lost weight between yesterday and today. It's kind of weird. If they did that, Pendrake, I'd want them to be able to be renewed 
like so that while they were starting to fade you could renew them so that uh if you really still liked it you could keep it right and then people could boast that they had the same temporary tattoo running for like 30 or 40 years i just wear my art in other ways that's what it comes down to so again we're putting i'm just going out you can see that kind of woven texture there <laughs> glittery skull hey glittery skulls are a thing you could do the um the uh um the festival of the damned kind of thing the skulls you know the cool skulls the day of the dead skulls those those just beg for glitter i mean that's the closest thing probably you're gonna get to glittery skulls that are not glittery Yeah, Dia de Muertos, yes. Do those. That would be your closest thing to a glittery skull. And if you could get them to actually make it look kind of glittery, that would be awesome. But I don't blame the tattoo artists. Like, you know, mostly they're just trying to get to be, like, good at drawing, right? And then somebody comes along and says, can you do NMM? <laughs> can you imagine how annoying that is? <laughs> Like, so I don't blame the tattoo artists for getting a little grumpy if you're they're your standard tattoo artist and then somebody wants a glitter tattoo. They're just like, that would honestly be like somebody like coming up to you as a commission painter and saying, but can you do non-iridescent iridescent? It's that thing. It's that thing a few people specialize in. All right, so I like that better. Um, I've broadened out the highlights a bit. If I really want to bring this up, I will need to do a lighter glaze, and it, it does risk um, taking down that purple. If I do a light glaze over this cloak, I won't be able to do the kind of situational glaze I did with the dark green, because when you put a lighter glaze down, you've got that white pigment in there, you will see lines. So you've got to put it over the entire surface when you do a lighter glaze. Yeah. And also, if I put a light glaze over this, yes, it would blend everything in, but it would also um, bring up, you know, lighten this whole area, and we want it to be darker because we want the contrast. So just a little highlight at the very top on this one. I'm going to go up to the leaf bud green on the very, very edge. There we go. Just bring that up a little bit. I'm gonna pop a little bit of that into this so that I can create a blend of it. There we go. Perfect, Polly. Excellent. Glad it works. That's always good to hear. Boop. Sweet. Just a little bit more here. I think we're looking pretty good. But yep, that's what the foundations of miniature painting, fundamentals of miniature painting. 
I'm getting them mixed up now. I was planning for the next set after I'm done with the fundamentals. I was uh, planning for the next set to be um, miniature painting foundations, and that'll be more specific on particular topics. And then there's the mindset of mini painting. I'll have so many acronyms. It'll be so confusing. But calling everything fundamentals doesn't work because like, then I'll have like 120 videos on fundamentals. <laughs> that doesn't really sound right. But yeah, I was gonna shoot one today um, because I, after I did that prep work video, I realized I should show people how to use green stuff to, um, to correct a mold line. So I figured I would actually do a really short video on that today if I had time or shoot it anyway. There we go. All right, I'm kind of liking this, guys. I think it's looking pretty good. And we still have half an hour. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. I think I want to do um, highlight these little flights up here. I don't think I want to get into NMM this late. Oh, and I forgot this strap completely. So I can do the blue liner um, on these straps and uh, get some of that done. And then next time we have to do all, essentially all of the gold remaining. Um, but I'm going to, I think I'm going to do everything but the gold today. So let me fish out my purple, which is actually a violet red plus white mixture with sticks purple for shading. Barrel the dragon. Nice pendry. So since it's um, violet red plus white, I am just going to do that mix and then I'm going to try to just put that over the top of this purple on these flights. Um, because there's white in it, it should work without needing an undercoat of white. So if you've never added white to red, violet red, you get a beautiful kind of uh, purpley pink. We need a base to show this. And then uh, it's actually a little duller than it's showing really saturated on the screen. But, um, and then if you want a raspberry color, just add a tiny touch of like sticks purple and you get, get a very pretty raspberry. Oh no, Minnie's falling, throwing Minnie's on floor. It's what I do. It's what I do. Luckily there's carpet and it's Bones USA. So it's never gonna break. Huh. Yeah, I'll have my $2 PDF out this week and uh, probably also the um, color workshop for my Patreon. So we should have both. And I'm going to make, actually I'm going to take that pink that I just made, transfer a little bit over, and then throw a lot of white into it. So a brush full of that plus two drops of white plus one drop of water. And that will give us a lighter pink. Kind of a strawberry pink actually. Whee, all right. So I'm going to go for the very, very light pink first, because these are very small. And I'm going to try to see if I can really bring out. So I can do those little brush strokes on the side, or I could just uh, go for kind of a stippling down the side. 
feel like uh, stippling might be the way to go just to, to bring out the edges. Because really that's what you're trying to do is bring out each of the flights, right? We don't have really enough room to do tiny lines. We could if we really wanted to spend a lot of time on this figure, so. But mostly those tiny lines are probably gonna just come out as kind of dashy dots, and that's all right. If I really wanted the, the tiny lines, I would wanna use pure white and then do glazes. I'm going to go over this with a more strong violet red too. So they're not just pink. But I want to be able to get some of the stuff on this side. Luckily this stuff is under the bow up here so it doesn't need very many highlights. Yeah. Yes, we're very good at pattern. Our brains are very good at patterns, which includes recognizable shapes. All right, let me get my, so that's very, very light, but I'm gonna grab my mid-range dark pink, this color, as opposed to that color. That's the color I was using first. I'm gonna grab this and uh, add that over the top. I'm gonna thin it. and try to do kind of the saturation trick that I did with the green. Although, I, if I really want saturation, I should really use the full strength violet red. But we'll just try it this way. Ah, oh, there we go. That actually worked. So yeah, this pink has still uh, enough saturation that it's, uh, Let's me slide all the color, but still keep those highlights. For some of the really clear or up top ones, I might come back in and hit a little bit of the details. Thanks, Grows. Yeah, it's got, it still needs a gold rim around it, but it took a long time. The shield took a long time. It's not freehand, though. Remember, it's actually, this is how Bobby sculpted it. In some ways, that makes it harder. However hard you might find freehand, Trying to paint um, pre-sculpted detail in a very tight way can be just as hard. So if you buy this model, you will see that shield. It's painting tiny on this stream in general. That's why it's Reaper Pro Tips. At least I have been painting bigger stuff on my stream lately. All right, so now I want to do that blue, black. I think all my other pink is done, so except maybe for the handle here, I want to do just a little bit. Yeah, well, I might do the dragon again next week. Who knows? I'll, I'll do whatever my gut feels like doing pretty much on my stream. All right. So let us do the blue-black. I'm going to back up a little bit, though, so I can keep in frame. That's good.
There we go. It's a John. Poof. Oh, did the um did the Kickstarter end? The Dungeon Dwellers one, or is it getting close? We suggested you need an emoji, John. That's just a beard with like googly eyes. That way, you would really be a disembodied beard. Last week. Oh, a few more days. It just hit 120k. Good. Yay! Dungeon Dwellers RPG. Hey, Kiki heard me. Do you want to role play, Kiki? Somehow I think you would be playing a barbarian. Would you be playing a barbarian? You want to come up and say hi to everybody? Do you want to come up and say hi? You have a giant head. How did you get so giant? You used to be this size. Your head is the size you used to be. Come on up. Yeah, you don't want it? No, she just wants to lean over on my lap and like get pettins. Oh, I see. It's the last week to back. Thank you. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, Chris. I thought you meant it ended last week, and I was like, oh. Five days remain. Five days remain, Kiki. Yeah, five days. Five days remain. Well, everybody better go back it if they want. Yes. I just like to remind them on this stream. Okay, giant dog. It's not time yet. We Yeah, we've got at least another 25 minutes, sweetie. Sorry. 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 Oh, do you want to come up now? Yes? No? Okay, I'm not going to sit here and just pet you. You can either come up and greet peoples, or you can go settle. Good girl. All righty. Sweet. So, yeah, Dungeon Dwellers RPG. It has some minis. If you're interested in the, in the world of Adon that Reaper has been, like, kind of putting stuff in for eons, kind of always been our, our under the radar uh, role-playing game setting um then go take a take a look so i'm using blue liner i'm just going to add white for some of this uh black leather like uh those straps on that on the quiver there just got to clean off my pokey tool real quick don't want to leave a lot of paint caked on it there we go and i'm gonna paint I missed this little strap before, so I need to get that. Yes, yes, we looked at the dragon last week. It looks like a pretty good dragon to practice scales on and, and to get uh, practice your uh, brush control on. Dragons are very good for brush control because they're repetitive. So I'm going to get this strap in here. Make sure that I've got all of this. Make sure I've got this. Yep, the straps on the other side are all painted, so we're good there. Okay, so now I need to highlight these straps back here. Oh, I'm sure that we'll be running it at ReaperCon. That's a no-brainer. Alrighty, so I'm adding a little bit of white to my blue liner, which creates a nice blue-gray, although um, it won't be too light of a blue-gray at first. If you want a much more blue blue-gray, then you should, uh, there it is, then you should utilize uh, Nightmare Black instead. But I tend to like uh, blue-grays that are much more neutral. Oh, Rhonda will not be on today, okay. Good to know. So I'm just going to do a little bit of highlighting along the edges and toward the center area that would be getting a little more light to bring out that little strap. You can see that highlight along the lower edge. Same as uh, these highlights are actually a little higher on this uh, quiver as it stands, but I feel like I need a little bit more, so so I decided it was time to mix up some blue liner and uh, double down on those. So let's add a little more white. Once again, the how you highlight and to what extent you highlight is going to send visual information to the viewer about what the material is like. So if we bring this up too high, it will appear to be shiny leather. 
And if we keep it more dull, then it's going to look more like a suede leather if we do stippling or just a regular, not as shiny leather, perhaps a worn, worn leather. All right, now I've got it even lighter. It starts to lose its blue a little bit, go a bit more gray. And that's what gives it um, a nice neutral color. But if we wanted to double down and make this look like more of a worn leather that was not shiny, then we would start kind of stippling along the edge of the leather a little bit. to imply cracking along the edge. And just a little bit of, of uh, texture does a pretty good job. Don't have to do a lot. People aren't really gonna be looking real close at this part of the model. But stippling strokes are really good for um, suggesting that areas are kind of uh, getting worn or pulling apart. Yeah, now is the time to start planning, planning for ReaperCon next year. Let's start squirreling away cash. I've been debating. One of the big fitness companies is running, it runs a sale in all of November. And I've been really, really, really tempted to get myself a, a barbell set. That's like the bar plus some weights so that I could do some weightlifting at home when it's not CrossFit. At first I was just going to order myself a kettlebell, but then I saw that they had a five items equals $5 shipping deal. And when you're ordering weights, <laughs> that's actually saves you a lot of money. So now I'm kind of sitting, it's been sitting in my cart for like four days now. And like, it's like a $600 like buy. And I'm just like, <sighs> I have the money. It's just, I'm reluctant to blow all of it. Because I finally recouped after uh, having to spend 600 on my new computer here. So having recouped that money, I am reluctant to blow it again. Even though I've been wanting a weight set ever since I started CrossFit again. Or started CrossFit. And unfortunately, it is not an easy thing to ask your relatives for for Christmas. <laughs> Both because of expense and uh, the impossibility of wrapping it. <laughs> uh, we already highlighted the stuff on the front here. Oh, a little bit of a blorf there. Put one of my little stipple dots in the center of the leather. But we did a good job highlighting the blue on the front here, so I don't feel like I really need to do much more. Yeah, Slayer, but I want really good quality, so unless I can find one of uh, a really good set, I tend not to look at those places. And part of that, honestly, is my uh, my introversion. Part of me just wants to order order from the impersonal computer rather than talking to people and arranging, having to go and pick up the thing. Like, like... Part of me just really doesn't like that. Part of me is like, if I'm going to buy this, I want it delivered to my home. And I want the exact thing that I want. So I'm far more likely to order. Yes, it would, yes, it would make more sense to save the money, but I've just never really liked it. I'm, I would consider it for an exercise bike. I would consider doing that because exercise bikes are ridiculously expensive. So if I decided to get one, I would totally go that route, the Craigslist or whatever. Yeah, Richard, who wants to buy things? Who wants to buy things from actual people? Um, actually, they already did, Pendrake. That's why I ended up on this website. 
my CrossFit coaches already said, I already did exactly what you said. And they're like, Rogue is running a sale right now where you can get almost free shipping on very weighty objects. You should go check it out. And my CrossFit classes are canceled for the week of Thanksgiving entirely. And I suspect they will also be canceled for the week of Christmas entirely since it's a small individually owned business and only one, one place, right? So obviously Tim wants to have the time off with his family for the holidays. And so do his coaches. So, so I know there's going to be at least two weeks where I, I have no CrossFit at all. And that's going to make me all weird. I don't want to lose my edge. And I don't want to, like, I didn't get a regular gym membership because I ended up with CrossFit, so I can't just go to a gym. Yeah, well, look at Rogue, roguefitness.com Spitfire all during the month of November. I'm just going to put you in the same situation I'm in. <laughs> they have a five for five deal, five for five bucks. So, and that's on a lot of their bars and their weights. So... So those five items, I get $5 shipping on. Yeah, and maybe I'll look on Amazon Warehouse for a kettlebell because I really, like originally, I just went to the site to find a kettlebell because that's like the absolute minimum. I can do plenty of CrossFit, um, CrossFit routines if I have a kettlebell. I can't do real weights, but I could do the other component. That are the uh, general core fitness um, cardio. But I have wanted, I have wanted a, a barbell set. Bye, Crowley. You got your butt kettlebells from Academy? Mm hmm I only need one. I just want, I want to get the next one up, the next weight up, because I've been using a certain weight at CrossFit, but now that weight is starting to feel light. But I kind of want to get, um, kind of get ahead and be able to work my way up until this new weight feels good. So, cause it feels really heavy right now. So I feel like I need to, I need to be doing that when I don't have to do like 50 reps. <laughs> yeah. Well, like I said, if you're looking for close to free shipping Spitfire and you don't want to go like, like they were advising going with the Craigslist route and getting somebody else's gear. Um, yeah, weights are expensive. Yep, yep, yep. But if you think about it the other way, like for me, um, Spitfire, I'm thinking like, I know how much I'm paying for a CrossFit membership. It's not cheap. And if I bought these weights and then I quit CrossFit, they would essentially pay for themselves in four months. Because it's about 150 a month for my gym. So, and, and if I look at it that way, like I could be able, I would be able to do almost everything I could do at my CrossFit myself at home, you know, then it, and it would pay for itself. Then it gets, then I, then my brain goes, oh, okay, maybe $600 isn't all that much. But yeah, it's also, but I mean, it's also, you know, the reason they charge that much is that you're never going to need new ones. <laughs> you're going to have those weights for forever. <laughs> yes. See, and for me, it's the opposite. I am much more likely to get a good workout in if I go someplace. Of course, I do know that if I have to go more than five minutes away, then that what you just said kicks in. <laughs> Which is why my CrossFit gym is only five minutes away. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, your cats, for sure. You can do that as long as they're not too wiggly. Right, exactly. See, I just know that when I've been out running the last couple nights, I've really been in the mood to come back and lift some weights. And I haven't been able to. So. It's true. It's true, Spitfire. I mean, you know I already work from home, so. Yeah, four blocks away if you include the parking lot, right? Yeah, but that's what makes it work. That's what makes it work. Because then you know, oh, it's just down the street. Like I hop in the car and five minutes later I'm at CrossFit. But yeah, it would be nice. Because the other thing is I really would like a third day of weight training, but I don't want to up my CrossFit membership because it will be expensive. 
So if I look at it that way, in 10 months, if I use it on Saturdays, I will have paid for it compared to the price of upping my CrossFit membership to include three days. <laughs> They're very sedate. <laughs> yep. I mean, but the thing is that when I, when I do my cardio first, when I go out and do my, my, my walk run, um, intervals, like I come home pretty pumped. So I come home with, with the motivation that if I could just walk into the garage and do some weights, I would do that. You're pumping cats, they per encouragement. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I'm very excited about how strong I'm getting. Like I really have always, I've kind of always wanted to be buff guys. If I can just like tell you that it's funny. Many of my old friends would laugh at me for saying that, but it's true. I've always wanted to be buff. And now I feel like I'm within spitting distance of getting buff. And I'm like, I need more. <laughs> oh, my, my neighborhood is really, um, really, after dark, it's really calm, Spitfire. So I just use my, I just run around my neighborhood. I run down all the, all the streets are really, really quiet after a certain point in the evening. Um, and I bought myself a, a light up belt for, for night walking and night running. So I do my intervals on, like, I, I run up one block, I walk back, I run down the next block, I walk the next two blocks, you know, or I guess I do two blocks, two or three blocks running at a time. So I do that. I suffer quietly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Richard, you have a point. Resale is also a thing. Especially if it's good quality stuff, which I'm, I mean, Rogue is really good quality stuff. So, yeah. I'm, essentially, I'm slowly kind of trying to talk myself into it. I have the money. It's right there. And there is a, there is a time limit because obviously the sale will end if I wait too long. They have other things on sale, too. So it's like, yeah. Yeah, it's like I have simple yoga for when I when I feel too, when I don't have the energy. I have definitely a simpler yoga routine. So I'm with you, Agent Marvel. But if I'm feeling lazy, I can still make myself get my 10,000 steps or 9,000 steps for the day. So, all right. So we've got that blue. We've touched up our green. Um, the next thing that I want to do is I feel like these boots, we didn't really tackle these boots very well, but we are also running out of time. So I guess I'll do my shading. <laughs> you have our blessing permission. Yeah. Mostly I, you guys gave me exactly what I wanted, which is just kind of a list of pros and cons. Uh, nut brown. I'm going to grab my nut brown and crack in ink and make sure my shadows are good on this boots. Bumpy tummy to everyone. Yes. I know I have abs. It's just I've got flab over them. <laughs> I need to like, like get the fat, work that fat out first. And then I can see my abs. I can kind of see the suggestion of my abs right now, which is a great motivator. And I've almost talked David into trying CrossFit guys. I've almost done it. I didn't think it would happen. But he is going to go, I think we are going to go on the hike with my CrossFit club and maybe they'll uh, wheedle him into tr giving it a try. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's cool for Christmas. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about. But David pointed out the, the impossibility. His parents probably wouldn't... Uh, give me anything because uh, the impossibility of wrapping it and uh, hauling it to uh, California would be a little much for how old they are. I would just ask, honestly, for gift certificates. That would be good, but nobody wants to give you that. Or at least my family is okay with it, but his family is not. Haha. <laughs> It's something you have to cultivate for sure with abs. All right. I mixed up um, some of my nut brown, my Kraken ink, and a, bit, a drop of brown liner to make a really dark, 
purpley brown. Kind of like a darker version of nut brown. And I'm going to use that to shade the boots with our last minutes here. See, I love getting gift certificates because it lets me get exactly what I want. Like, mostly... I'm asking for gifts when I need a new computer. I'm asking for gifts, gift cards. Um, I'm like, please give me gift cards. I want to buy. In this case, I still want to buy a new iPad for myself, but that can be put off now because I have plenty to keep me busy for the next year. So 3D sculpting is going to have to wait because of all the other crap that I've taken on. But like, I'm happy asking for you know Best Buy gift gift certificates for a couple of Christmases, that'll end up taking like $400 off the cost of a new iPad for me. I consider that like a win. So I'm just bringing in some of that purple, really, really dark. It's really, really dark. It's that color right there. Yeah, watch out for that, because I mean, I'm I'm 51. I'm two years older than you, Deborah Walk, and I was very flimsy when I started this. Uh, it doesn't take all that long to get your strength back, and it's worth it. It's so worth it. Like, I was talking to David's parents over they they did a Skype call yesterday so we could figure out Christmas, and they just don't get CrossFit really. And I'm like, well, here here's here's a here's kind of a comparison. When I first moved to California, when Kiri was really bad. Um, I, it hurt to bend down and get something off the floor. Like my back would ache directly when I did it. I was having all those back spasms that were constantly interrupting streams. You know, I, I would have, I had to take a lot more muscle relaxers. I was really weak. I would, I would be terrified if I had to like carry Kiri partially up the stairs. Cause I was afraid I just couldn't do it because my back was so bad. And my core was so bad. And then I started yoga and things got better and then I started CrossFit and now I feel like, like I used to, I used to struggle to carry a bag of groceries and two eight packs of sparkling water from my car, a b less than a block, probably about a block plus two flights of stairs up to my apartment. When I came here, when I first came to California, I would struggle to do that. It was terrible. I would have to stop halfway and rest. Now I walked a Safeway, which is two blocks. I get two things of sparkling water and two bags of groceries and I'm just like doo, 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 and I don't even think about it. It's effortless. But I mean, this is just like four months of CrossFit. Yeah, about a year, a couple of years of yoga, which got me, you know, to the point where I could consider CrossFit without crying. Um, and then, and then actually doing, you know, weights and gym stuff. But like, this is where I want to be, right? Like heading into my fifties, I want to be the person who can carry two bags of groceries and, you know, two, eight packs of water, two or three blocks without even caring about it. Right. I want to be that person. I don't want to be the person I was before. That's for sure. Cause then it's just going to be harder as I get older. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't take much to build up a little bit of fitness when you've got nothing, when you're starting from low. But age, I I, I don't know that, I mean, yes, there are considerations with age, right? Like there definitely, there are changes that happen. But I mean, there's a CrossFit class for 65 and older and a couple of people in it are in their 70s and they can kick my butt. <laughs> so... I've never really believed, and maybe this is just my weird mentality, but I've never really believed in that whole aging thing. Like, as far as, like, you're guaranteed to just break down and get, you know, old and scrungely, whatever scrungely means. You know what I mean. I always thought that, you know, if I made an effort, I should be able to, like, still be pretty healthy into my 80s, assuming no weirdness happens, right? So part of me is very motivated with CrossFit because I would like to be, I'm in the best shape of my life right now and I'm 51. Like it's insane. Yeah. That's really good, Kerniko, because you went through something even harder than I did. Is it, is it your um, respiratory system or is it your legs giving out, Kerniko? <laughs> 
Because flagging is okay. Just keep going. But, you know, like, what? but what is it? Do you think you'd need to build cardio more? Because I, I have trouble with hills, too, still. I'll, I'll say. Because everything around here is so freaking flat. Yeah, every time I see, like, a, an older person in our grocery store on the street who's just, like, really struggling, I feel bad for them. But I'm willing to do work to make sure that I can be happier, so, as I get older. But yeah, so I would encourage you, even if you feel like you're old and you're losing ground, it's worth it. It's worth it to try to get yourself back up there. Or, you know, as far as you can. For me, I was really out of shape when I was, like, in high school. So this is honestly the most fit I've ever been. I want to be one of those uh, kick-ass people who's really fit in their 70s. My parents are pretty fit. They just, they use weight bands, resistance bands. They don't lift. But they do resistance bands and they do... Um, Mom does a lot of physical therapy, like I do. PT exercises and yoga type exercises. And dad walks. Dad and mom both walk a lot. Nope, we stop. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Okay, so yeah, so you're just like... I wonder if you can work on it or if that's just a new limitation. Like, sometimes you get there, and sometimes... Sometimes you can work your way past it, but I don't know. Because I know you went through a pretty hellish period there, Kuro, so I, I would not presume to wonder what you could do. Have you talked to your doctors about it? So I just wanted to reshade these boots, make them a little bit so the wrinkles all stand out a little bit more, and I've got more of a shadow here at the heel. It is very odd. Yeah. Right. Yeah, good, 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 Mighty Deborah Walk, yeah. Yeah, for sure you have to work a little harder at it now, right? We don't have that natural youthfulness. You have to convince the body that it's still in a growth and uh, transformation period, but I think that pays dividends in the long run. Let's get our, more of our shading over here. Ha, <laughs> your doctor. You need a better doctor. <laughs> You need, you need the cheerleader physical therapist doctor that is, like, super thrilled at your progress and understands that your limitations are, like, largely, like, inside your own head and who will cheer you on and give you, like, potential ways to keep going. Like, you need that person. I wish, I wish that, uh, that medical professional for you, Kiro, Kiro. Not the doctor who's like, well, you're already impossible. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, doc. Oh, you do. Okay, good, good, good. That's great. Well, maybe we'll figure out what it is. Maybe you'll figure out um, that you just need to go, maybe just ramp it up a little slower and try small hills first. I, th I don't know if you have small hills in Scotland. Maybe your small hills are mountains. <laughs> I don't know. But you can do it, Kuro. You can do it. There we go. So a little bit more shading brings out all those nice details on the boot. And then when I come back in and I highlight more, um, we're going to have, uh, it's going to be better defined in general. Same with this one over here. You can see all those nice details now. Smills, smountains. <laughs> oh, physiotherapy was kind of basic. Just happy. Yeah, come on. Yeah, osteoporosis is a hard one. 
I have a friend who's got severe osteoporosis, and honestly, and uh, she also had a gastric bypass when she was younger, and apparently that limits what medications they can actually give her. So that's a suck. But um, I guess calcium citrate maybe would help um, Swiss stoma if you can have it. But you want easily absorbable calcium. I take mine with vitamin D and uh, magnesium. I take I take a bunch of vitamins. Hi, Papa. Hi. Are you here to say hi to everybody? Did you bring me your fragment of a bully stick? Are you going to drop it on my knee and gross me out? Are you going to come up? Are you going to come up? Yeah? You want to come up on my knee? Yeah? You want to come up here? Oh, come on. You climb into my na my lap just fine when you're in, uh, when we're at the table. Yeah, yeah. Bone loss. Uh, weightlifting can help with bone loss, by the way, if you didn't know, Zachariah. <laughs> you can do it, Pristinoma. Hopefully you can you can uh, surmount those challenges. Don't they make a wheelie rot walker with a cart that you could put the O2 concentrator in? Ah. Yeah, weightlifting does does have the chance of helping. So cool. All right, well it's quarter after. We've gotten a nice shadows. We we have quite the palette today. I'll show it because it's pretty. Our palette is very pretty today, guys. Look at us. Look at us with the complementary colors and neutrals. Look, it's green that's not Christmas, folks. Oh, that's exciting, Zachariah. That's so exciting. Well, damn, now I need to go buy my weights. <laughs> Zachariah's got me pumped now. He's like, I bought this. I'm so excited. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> Now I really want to buy mine. <laughs> Although I didn't buy a, I didn't buy the wall rack so that I can have it, you know, at the, at this level. Oh, good. Oh, good. Yes. We can get, we can get buffed together, Zachariah. We can get buff. It's good. Agent Marvel will cheer us on too. Cause you'll be getting your, your uh, home gym too, Agent Marvel. So there we go. Super awesome. Super awesome. Well, thank you everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Yeah. Dr. Seuss. It is kind of, isn't it? It is kind of Dr. Seuss Christmas. You're right, Turgeon. That's funny. Um, but yes, yes. Ah, okay, with vitamin D3. You're trying. Good job. Good job, Tristoma. Then just keep at it. Yeah, it can't hurt. It can't hurt. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, get puff, get abs. <laughs> is that our new stream logo? <laughs> Who says mini painters can't be buff? There's another t-shirt, folks. <laughs> Or my abs are painted on and then just have the graphic of a six pack where they need to be. <laughs> oh man. Okay, this is getting fun. <laughs> it's in trouble. <laughs> my abs are painted on. All right, hey guys, tomorrow we work on Ed. We work on Ed tomorrow. Hey, we're back. We're back with Ed, with our super bright red Ed um, and our super bright blue Ed. And maybe we'll do skin. I think we'll do skin tomorrow. We'll grind some neutrals um, and figure out uh, what other color I'm doing, like for his, his deathly energy. Maybe a green. Yes, red Ed. Yes. All right, so that's what we're doing tomorrow. I hope y'all will come and hang out as usual. I really like this model. I'm, I'm going to be sad when this one is done, actually, because I really, really like him. I think he's fantastic. Um, maybe we'll do a fancy base for him. I think he's cool. Red Ed Redemption. All right, folks. Thank you so much. Uh, Kiki, sadly, did not want to make an appearance today. Maybe she's getting old. Who knows? Um, but I hope to see you tomorrow. And I hope you, I hope that despite it being a Monday with a capital M, you find a way to move on and have a good rest of the week. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Quindy, as always, for being my awesome mod. And uh, yeah, I will see you. Get buff. <laughs>